Hello dear friends, welcome to Adventure Store channel. Today my dear friends, you will have the opportunity to see the Alphabricator video from MAN. This is really really important to see and locate some details of this system, to see the function, to see some settings, to check also some overhauling procedure. I will be very very glad if you have already subscribed and you have always your thumbs on the top your comments really really I read them all and they're really really nice I like them so we will proceed to more and more videos and we will go deeper in more engineering this video will be a little bit long but anyway I know that you have the courage to continue watching Adventure Story Channel. So guys, in the future videos I'm planning to make more videos with uh, pictures which we'll discuss together and see some interesting facts. So guys, enjoy the video, I believe you will like it for sure and stay tuned to Adventure Story Channel. Open the valve in the cylinder oil supply line. Switch on the electrical power supply. Start both oil supply pumps and check that they are able to run simultaneously. Check that the pressure drop indicator for the pressure filter is green. Also check that the hands on the pressure drop gauges for both suction filters are in the green area. Check that the oil pressure is between 40 and 50 bar. Press the pre-lubrication button on the operating panel and check each of the feedback indicators to confirm that all lubricators are functioning properly. Set both pumps to remote control. The lubricating system is now ready for operation. When the auxiliary blowers are started up, the lubricating system will automatically start and carry out the pre-lubrication process. If the engine is not started up within a certain period of time, the lubricating system will return to the standby mode and then start automatically when the engine is started. Check that one of the pumps starts automatically when the engine starts and that no alarms have been activated. Check that the pressure builds up to 40 to 50 bar 
and check each of the feedback indicators to confirm that all lubricators are functioning properly. Check that the oil temperature is between 40 and 60 degrees centigrade. Check that there are no leakages in the system. Check that the pressure is between 40 and 50 bar. Check each of the feedback indicators to confirm that all lubricators are functioning properly. Feel the lubricating pipe for pressure surges the presence of which indicate that the lubricating points are being supplied with oil. Make regular checks, for instance in connection with the scavenge port inspections, that each lubricating point is functioning correctly. Start the lubricating system and press the pre-lubrication button to inject oil into the engine cylinders. Use a mirror inserted through the scavenge port to check all lubricating points. Regularly measure the cylinder oil consumption via the cylinder oil tank and use these measurements to calculate the cylinder oil feed rate. Once a good cylinder condition has been obtained with well running cylinder liners and piston rings, the good condition can in most cases be sustained by employing the basic setting to ensure the correct cylinder oil feed rate. The basic setting corresponds to the reading 100% on the operating panel. When running in cylinder liners or piston rings, or in the event that abnormal cylinder conditions are detected during one of the regular scavenge port inspections, the feed rate of the relevant cylinders may have to be adjusted. See Instruction Book, Volume 1, Operation, Chapter 707. The feed rate of an individual cylinder can be adjusted via the operating panel. Press Setup and Enter simultaneously to enter the setup mode. Press Setup to display the current feed rate setting. Press the up or down buttons to change the feed rate to the desired value. Press Enter to save the new value. Press Setup and then the up or down buttons to repeat this sequence for another cylinder or Press Enter to exit the setup mode. Before starting any disassembling work, stop the engine, shut off the starting air distributor, block the main starting valve, engage the turning gear, Open the indicator cocks and switch off the electrical power supply to the pump station. Note it is not necessary to stop the engine and pump station if the lubricator unit is fitted with two lubricators for each cylinder. See Instruction Book, Volume 2, Procedure 903. Close the supply valve and open the equalizing valve by turning both handles to a horizontal position. Loosen and remove the screws from the cover with the lubricating pipes. Remove the screws that secure the lubricator to the hydraulic block. Disconnect the electrical plug and remove the lubricator. Secure the lubricator in a bench vise with soft jaws.
Unscrew the oil accumulator and the adjusting screw and remove the bushing. Discard the O-ring from the adjusting screw. Remove the screws that secure the cylinder block to the housing and remove the cylinder block. Discard the O-ring from the cylinder block. Remove the spring and the actuator piston which is provided with plungers. Loosen and remove the connector on the solenoid valve and remove the terminal box. Carefully unscrew the feedback sensor. If the feedback sensor is to be replaced, disassemble the connector and disconnect the feedback sensor. Mount the new feedback sensor after fitting it with a new O-ring. Connect the wires as shown in the instruction book and then reassemble the connector. Place the cylinder block in a bench vise with soft jaws and remove the non-return valve cover. Remove the springs and the steel balls. Remove and discard the O-rings. Carefully clean all the parts and dry them with clean, non-fluffy rags. Inspect all seats and ceiling surfaces with a magnifying glass. Use a lamp to inspect the internal surfaces. Using new O-rings, reassemble the cylinder block. Insert the screws so that they just engage in their threads. Check with the tip of a small screwdriver that the springs of the non-return valves are correctly centered. Fully tighten the screws.
Mount the plungers in the actuator piston and lubricate the plungers and cylinder block with cylinder oil. Insert and align the plungers in the cylinder block. Remove the actuator piston assembly, mount the spring and reinsert the assembly. Check that the plungers can move freely. Press the actuator piston downwards and insert the screw to keep the parts together. Place the lubricator housing in a soft jawed vise and mount the feedback sensor provided with a new O-ring. Check that the end of the sensor does not protrude into the cylinder for the actuator piston. Use fingers and something with a firm straight edge, for example a caliper, to carry out this check. Mount the terminal box and the solenoid valve connector. Lubricate the housing and mount the cylinder block assembly. Remove the screw from the cylinder block assembly. Mount a new o-ring on the adjusting screw and mount the bushing and adjusting screw. Finally, mount the oil accumulator. If the lubricator is not to be installed immediately, use plastic plugs to protect each opening and coat all surfaces with a thin layer of oil. Mount new o-rings on the hydraulic block and on the cover with lubricating pipes. Carefully mount the lubricator and secure it to the hydraulic block with the four screws. Connect the electrical plug and mount the screws which secure the cover with lubricating pipes to the lubricator. Finally, close the equalizing valve and open the supply valve by returning both handles to the vertical position. The smaller outlet accumulator must be dismounted before the pressure test is carried out. If there is room, the larger inlet accumulator can be tested while mounted. Note, it is not necessary to stop the engine and pump station to check the inlet accumulator. 
if the accumulator is equipped with a cut-off valve and a mini-mess drain connection. See Instruction Book, Volume 2, Procedure 903. Close the supply valve and open the equalizing valve by turning both handles to a horizontal position. Loosen the oil accumulators and unscrew them slowly to release any remaining oil pressure. Connect the hose to the reducing valve and to the filling valve. Insert a copper gasket and mount the 0 to 60 bar pressure gauge. Connect the reducing valve to the nitrogen cylinder and tighten all connections. Secure the inlet accumulator in a bench vise with soft jaws and remove the plastic plug. Carefully clean the sealing surfaces of the accumulator and the filling valve and mount the filling valve. Make sure that both the venting valve and the outlet valve are closed and then open the plug screw in the accumulator with a half inch square socket wrench. Read the nitrogen pressure and compare it to the value stated in procedure 903. If the pressure is too high, reduce the pressure by opening the venting valve. If the pressure is too low, make sure that the reducing valve spindle is turned fully counterclockwise and then open the valve on the nitrogen cylinder. Turn the spindle slowly in the clockwise direction until the outlet pressure is slightly above the specified pressure. Open the outlet valve. Fill the accumulator to the specified pressure. And then close the outlet valve. Adjust the torque spanner to the value stated in procedure 903 and tighten the plug screw. Open the venting valve. Close the valve on the nitrogen cylinder. Then open the outlet valve and turn the spindle fully counterclockwise. Remove the filling valve and once again tighten the plug screw to the specified torque. Finally, mount the plastic plug. Secure the outlet accumulator in a soft jawed vise and remove the plastic plug. Carefully clean the sealing surfaces of the accumulator and the filling valve and mount the filling valve. Remove the 0 to 60 bar pressure gauge. Fit a copper gasket and mount the 0 to 10 bar pressure gauge. Repeat the pressure testing procedure. Refer to procedure 903 for the specified nitrogen pressure.
Finally, close the equalizing valve and open the supply valve by returning both handles to the vertical position. The position of the crankshaft has no relevance with regard to the checking and replacing of the trigger pickups. However, before checking and replacing marker pickups, the crank throw for cylinder number one must be turned to the top dead center position. Check the top dead center position at the turning wheel and confirm it by means of a pin gauge measurement in the crankcase. Check that the uppermost edge of the marker plate is in the center line of the marker pickups. Check the distance between the pickups and their counterparts with a feeler gauge. See Instruction Book Volume 2, Procedure 905. Adjust if necessary. Remove the junction box cover. Before replacing the pickups, make a sketch of the wiring connections, indicating which wire is connected to which positions, so that the safe remounting of the pickups can be ensured. Loosen the nuts, lock nuts and wires, and replace the pickups. After installing the new pickups, Check that the uppermost edge of the marker plate is in the center line of the pickups and check that the gaps to their counterparts correspond to the values given in the instruction book. Finally, reinstall the junction box cover. If the hand of the pressure drop gauge points to the red area, the suction filter must be overhauled. This can be carried out while the pump station is running. Stop the pertaining supply pump and switch off the electrical power supply. Close the valve in the suction line and dismount the suction filter cover. Remove the filter insert and fit a new one. Mount the cover. Open the valve in the suction line. Finally, switch on the electrical power supply and set the pump to remote control. Check that there are no leakages. If the pressure drop indicator is red, the pressure filter must be overhauled. This can be carried out while the pump station is running. Turn the handle of the valve so that the oil bypasses the filter. Dismount the filter housing and replace the filter insert with a new one. Mount a new sealing ring on the filter housing and mount the housing.
reset the pressure drop indicator if this has not already been done automatically and turn the handle of the valve so that the oil passes through the filter. Check that there are no leakages. Read the oil pressure on the pressure gauge and compare the reading with the value given in the instruction manual. If necessary, adjust the pressure by turning the handle on the side of the hydraulic block. Move the set point to a lower alarm level. Adjust the oil pressure to the value at which the alarm for low oil pressure is to be activated. Slowly move the set point to a higher alarm level until the alarm for low oil pressure is activated. Check that the standby pump starts automatically. Finally, readjust the oil pressure to the normal value. The hydraulic block is fitted with a number of cutoff valves which allow the <laughs>